Hi, today's good person to know is Camilla Long. She's a journalist and film critic for the Sunday Times. And in this video, Camilla explains her key tips when conducting interview. She says, do your research and be prepared and read everything if you have enough time, but definitely read cuttings from credible sources if you don't. Camilla says it's a given that the interviewee, especially if they're in the public eye, will have fine-tuned their spiel. So get all those trotty quotes over and done with as quickly as possible so that you've got time to really dig, get something juicy, something that they haven't told anybody else. She says people will always be wary about being interviewed because it's an artificial situation and that she can spend as long as 20 minutes calming them down by asking them soft questions having a relaxing conversation, being jovial, and just generally being very charming. Camilla says it's really exhausting because you have to concentrate and listen incredibly hard, paying close attention to what they're saying, thinking about your next question, not tripping up and remembering to go back because it's really infuriating if you get to do that because that's probably where the story lies. Once Camilla has done the interview, she reflects accurately on what's happened and uses quotes which are revealing and which they cannot question. And sometimes she'll call them up for a quick five minutes afterwards just to clarify on a few points too. Now Camilla has interviewed a fair amount of celebrities in her time and she says celebs can lose a grip on reality because they're surrounded by a bunch of people who are constantly singing their praises and it's their entourage that actually make things happen. So the sooner you can get them to talk in a normal scenario the better and that is the whole point of your interview after all. She says the perception that celebs are not interested in the press is absolute rubbish. They are desperate for it and that's why they'll go to such lengths to position themselves in the media. Now this video is particularly relevant to anyone interested in PR, media, journalism, wants to know how to conduct themselves in an interview, what an interviewee is likely to ask. I hope you enjoy it and thank you for watching. Probably only have, I can have only half an hour to prepare, so at which rate it's very quick read of the cuts, try to speak to people who know them and then just go in. If I have as much time as I want I'll try and read as much, uh, as many books as I possibly can, maybe if they've done an autobiography. Um, if I haven't read the books that they've written about themselves, like, you can often miss things, so I would do that. Um, doing cut searches, you've got to make sure you get, a, you get a really good search, otherwise what you don't want to be do is doing is reading millions of articles from the Brighton Argus in 1998 <laughs> about what they did back then. You need to get it tailored down to the right interviews. If another big interviewer has done um, a piece you always read that, like I'll always read it if Decker um, from The Guardian has done it, or Lynn, or uh, Deborah Ross, um, they're always quite good pointers. And also good pointers where you don't want to go as well, because I think the one thing I think about when I go into an interview is let's try and get something that nobody has seen or heard before. Listing questions and getting open questions as opposed to closed questions. You'll hit it pretty quickly when you come into the interview and you you just that's when you do rely on your research because then you're digging around just to find things that they can say that might be half interesting and it's not necessarily that they're even frightened it's just that some people are you know have yeah quite you know pleasant and happy lives you know we don't want to hear about that so read as many cuts as possible it is a good idea to try and get, get all those trotty quotes that they they bring out try and get them out of the way try and get them to say something different. Of course it does become rather funny if you're sitting there, I think you can sort of make a, make a point about it, that they're like sort of, you know, reciting by rote a script that you've heard so many times before. Sometimes what I quite like to get is the interview with the person which is the centre of it, but then also colour around it. The rules of engagement are quite formal, yeah. but it's your job as an interviewer to relax people as quickly as possible. It's a very, very nice privilege of being a journalist access or the support of a paper to do that and I think that's a really important point about what we do is that you know you, you underestimate that privilege. I, what I want to do when I sit down is to reflect um, accurately what actually happened. Mm. So a lot of the times I kind of get round that by just simply quoting them and getting quotes out of them which are revealing and things that they've said and that they can't question essentially. So I think I go into interviews know very clearly that um, that this is a this is as you say a formal occasion mm -hmm. and you will have either a notebook or a tape recorder which is a constant visual reminder to them that they're on record. Yes. So I think that kind of helps me to distance myself from it as well. 
By the way, it's very difficult to stitch somebody up who is already awful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so people will behave as they are in in in, nat in a natural environment in, in, in an interview, and some will do it quicker than others. You have to have faith that that's what will happen. I think if you're a very if you're a famous celebrity and you are used to adulation. getting your way yeah. and adulation, and you are surrounded by people who love you, it's quite easy to lose your grip on reality. And you probably don't actually have any normal encounters anymore because you're dealing with people who are, you know, deeply in love with you most of the time. Yeah, I don't think anybody's wary. I'm all. Whenever I've done interviews, you know, people have been wary. It's a sort of artificial situation. It's this, as you say, this sort of intimate, over-formalized scenario that's not quite real. And um, so I spend probably a good 20 minutes at the beginning of a of an interview kind of calming people down in a weird sort of way. Soft questions, just being, you know, making Talk jokes, about, relax, getting them to relax, yeah. saying, you know, you know, great album or whatever, yeah. and you know, and that kind of stuff. It's not too, it's just, I think, you know, if you're socialised and, you know, a bit of chats in the pub, then, then basically you kind of latch into that for a bit, and then if they're, once they're relaxed and realise that you're not going to, some of the, I mean, some people sort of, if they don't interview very much, then they might, you know, you, you've just got to remind them of what the sort of the game is and how it how it works. And sometimes, you know, they can be nervous of the very thing itself, not just you. Um, so I think that yeah, just relax, relaxing conversation and a few jokes. If you can be a bit charming as well, I think then that will that will get you that will get you in as you know quickly as possible. I do want to know about you know what. You know, it's sort of weirdly like winning the lottery if you suddenly, you know, write a book that's amazingly, it's a J.K. Rowling yeah. thing, it's amazingly, you know, and that's just a great story. So I think sometimes when the story, you know, and ditto with Psy, what's it like to suddenly have your, 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 you know, pop song seen by a billion people? Mm. That's, you know, so, so in, I always listen to that bit quite closely to see, you know, if that's really the story. I think it takes a little while to get over the bedazzlement, but as soon as you become familiar with the, with the processes of what it is to become a celebrity, um, and that actually it's a team of people ensuring that this happens, yeah. um, it sort of the mystique does drop away quite quickly. And and as soon the quicker you can get to the stage where you feel like you're talking to them in a you know a completely normal scenario, and that they are reacting to you in a totally normal, relaxed kind of a way. The better you're, that's what you need. To, that's that's the aim is to try and get that um, that to happen as quickly as possible. And some people, you will be able to sense it in the interview as well. Some people take much longer than others. Some, one of my interview when interviewees took a whole 45 minutes before I could palpably feel that they had relaxed. And, and some probably don't even relax ever. It's, it's, a, it's a total pleasure to be in an interview with somebody who you know is just going to totally relax immediately and, and say funny, exciting, provocative things. You know, the concentration. I suppose that the, I actually find interviews incredibly exhausting. Yeah. Like you physically, you have to concentrate. It's so not a conversation. You're trying to fake and natural conversation, but it's in no way a normal conversation because you have to listen incredibly hard, you have to concentrate, you always have to be thinking of your next question yeah. but not tripping yourself up because you're thinking of your next question. Yeah. You have to remember things and go back to things. If um, I, I, Almost every interview I do, they'll, they'll drop a sort of hanky sort of a third of the way through and you have to make sure for two thirds of the way through so you know that's the keyhole that you come back. Yeah. And it's so infuriating if you've forgotten to do that, because that's probably where the story is. Sometimes I'll then just set telephone and just say, could I have an extra five minutes or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, and usually they oblige, because they're, you know, they're, this perception that celebrities are not up for press yeah. is rubbish. Is they're rubbish. And it's just, press. they're desperate for it. And, you know, the, 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 the lengths they go to to position themselves in the media, I think this is why they get so furious if they're not positioned in the right way. Because they're used to being able to sort of pay people and publicists and, you know, wranglers to, to position them in such a way.